Hello everyone! Happy Friday! Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you replay viewers for watching and thanks YouTube viewers for watching. Uh, this will go up on uh, YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies when we're done here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. It's our time to relax and craft for about an hour, and we work on a project uh, from beginning to end. And we are currently working on the Charming Chevrons pattern, quilt pattern, uh, by Krista Watson of Krista, Krista Quilts. And uh, we are getting close to getting this top finished. So yesterday we uh, got these three rows sewn together in uh, the bottom portion of a uh, part of the, the bottom portion. And uh, we're going to finish up this kind of quadrant. This is the lower right hand quadrant. We still have to do the lower left hand quadrant sewing the rows together. And uh, so basically what we're doing Tonight we'll be continuing with my stack here and then soon by next week I think we'll have the entire quilt top done. So I'm super stoked about that. Uh, so let's get sewing tonight. Thanks for joining me everyone. I'm excited to see you guys popping in again. I hope you had a really great Friday and uh, high hopes for the weekend. <laughs> so all right, I'm going to flip you around. We'll get started. All right. So we are going to start right at the sewing machine tonight, same as last night. So let me just wiggle around for a tiny hair. Okay, here we go, guys. So we're going to start off by pinning our two top rows together. We did, did the bottom rows, bottom rows earlier yesterday so let's let's try and get a move on i want to finish this whole quadrant here tonight we just have two rows to sew really uh, but here we'll turn this off while i'm not sewing uh, but we got to clip them all and that that takes time so we did the webbing style of chain piecing so all of our rows are already connected we just have to grab our wonder clips and uh, open our seams up and clip clip them. Basically, we're we're kind of like pinning them, but we're we're using wonder clips instead. So that's that's the deal tonight. We'll do a lot of clipping and uh, a lot of row sewing, but we are getting there, getting to the end of the quilt top. I think we'll, I think the clips have to be this way. But let me know how your guys' Friday went. I did a lot of computer stuff today, so I gotta wear my funny computer glasses, which just kind of make me happy. Oh yes, so you guys, I am gonna be doing a webinar for Sulky coming up in a couple weeks. It's, it's gonna be on April 10th. And uh, it, I think it'll probably be about an hour or so long, but we will be making the little zipper pouch from that craft text book that I was a part of. So the, the craft text is that paper that kind of acts like fabric. You can sew it. it kind of think of like a Levi's, a Levi's um, tag. You know, it's kind of, it, it, it's, it almost looks like leather but it's not, it's a, it's a paper and you can wash it. It's kind of an awesome material. So we'll be talking about craft text during the webinar and I'll be showing how to make the, uh, I'll have photos to show how to make that little zipper pouch. And it has a, another, uh, it has one of my, a little portion of one of my new embroidery patterns on there, a little cute little kitty. So you can see that in the image. I, I put an image up on the Penguin and Fish Crafters page. But yeah, it's a fun, it'll be like a fun little intro to, to craft text. And we even like insert a zipper in it. It's going to be super fun. So I encourage you to sign up for that. I put a link to it in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. And I will, I'll be sending an email out about it as well with some reminders. So be sure that you're on my, uh, my email list there as well. And there's a link to that in this Facebook post if you are not 
not already on, not already getting my emails. But yeah, I'm I'm excited about it. It's gonna be fun and. Uh, Craft text is, it's kind of, you know, it's similar to like the cork that's super popular. We talked about the cork a little yesterday, but it's another kind of alternative material that you can use for a ton of stuff. So yeah, so that'll be with Sulky. It's Sulky Webinars, and uh, I do have a link to sign up. So how it'll work is you sign up to the webinar, and that allows you, you'll get sent emails then and instructions for how to join the webinar. Yes, yes, Gretchen, it's a sign up. So you have to you have to sign up and then they'll email you instructions on how to join the webinar. I think you probably just yeah, click a button when it's when it's on and then you'll uh, you'll see the page where it's live and they will talk you through it. Um, they'll talk you through it when when we're live, like how to download everything, and there will be some fun freebies. So you'll want to make sure to to join that. And there's also going to be replays. So if you don't, if you can't make it to the uh, uh, live, it's going to stay on the Sulky webinar website uh, indefinitely. So you'll still be able to to um, join in, even if even if you can't come right at the time. But yeah, I'm really excited about it. I'm still doing a little bit of prep for it. And we're gonna have a little dress rehearsal next week for it. So we're all ready to go for when you guys watch it. And then uh, then we'll get, get going on it on the 10th. So mark your calendars for April 10th. And yeah, it's from that fun craft textbook. And I'll show you more on that uh, in a few days here, for sure. All right, let's sew this first strip, first row. I'm excited though. I haven't done a webinar like that before, so it's gonna be gonna be kind of neat. So it'll be um, it'll it won't be live stitching like this. It will be uh, photos of the process, so it won't take forever. Basically, um, it'll be photos of the process, and I'll walk, I'll walk you through the whole process with uh, my little tips and tricks along the way, and then, uh, then there's a chance to ask questions and everything at the end. And if you still have a question after that, you know where to find me every night. <laughs> All right, so I'm just kind of checking that my my seam is still open underneath every time I kind of approach approach my wonder clip. We just have one more seam on this this uh, quadrant, then this quadrant's done. But then we got all the seams, all the row seams to do on uh, that other lower quadrant. So we'll be at these rows for a little bit yet. I accidentally folded over that edge again. Get down there. You guys, we are supposed to have snow again this weekend. Ugh. I know I shouldn't complain because a lot of you have way more snow than we have right now, but man. I'm getting so antsy. I'm kind of getting a little spring cleany-ish around the house though. Like I just wanna, I wanna get rid of all the things and use up all the things and, um, you know, refreshing everything. Must be. Spring's approaching. But oh man, oh, just to open the windows would be so nice. Let in some real air. Oh, what day for the uh, webinar, um, Joe? Oh, oh, or for the snow. Uh, well, the webinar is the 18th, or not the 18th, it's the April 10th, which is also my mom's birthday. 
And, <laughs> and then I think this, like tonight, I think at 11, it's supposed to start snowing. So I don't know, might wake up tomorrow morning with some snow. Just gonna kind of mess up my day a little bit. Oh, trying to flip the seam over. There we go. Well, I think we're getting a little bit of the snow that is in the um, Dakota area right now, in the Dakotas. But it's gonna like either hit us or or like totally miss us, which is just so stupid, right? That's like anything could happen then. So I don't know. Silly weatherman. We'll see though. But I am like dying to just go for a nice warm walk outside. Okay, done. Nope, Gretchen, the wall of boxes are still there. I'm I'm waiting till tomorrow to bring them to FedEx uh, so they get shipped out on Monday. So nope, the wall is still there. <laughs> All right, so that was that road. Now we only have the one more, so I'm going to clip this again. And then we'll have this quadrant done. I can move it to the side and... Start up the other quadrant again. Here, I'll turn this off again so that light isn't in our face. Oh, Joe, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, hopefully the roads are okay. I mean, right now everything's perfectly fine. And you know, maybe it changed during the day too. I just, I looked in the morning at the weather. So I'm still not sure about doing all these seams open. I mean, we'll see how I feel once we start machine quilting, but like if I would have pressed these uh, to either side, I could have nested, nested these um, seams together, making a nice point. And uh, I probably wouldn't have had to pin at all. I could have just sewn. That's the nice thing that I like about nesting seams is that they just butt up against each other. What I mean by nesting seams is instead of opening them like how we are now, you know, like here's our seam, I'm opening them, meaning I'm putting uh, each piece of fabric to either side like this. So it is open versus pressing them to one side like this or pressing them to this side and if I press them all to one side and then I press this one the opposite way then the seams the little bulk of the seams kind of bump up next to each other you can physically feel that and if you can get those bumped up next to each other and then sew through it you get like a super pretty nice point or a, like a nice join where all the all the lines kind of match up, all the seams match up. Uh, but the ba debate is whether these open seams are better, like if it's better, better on the wear of the quilt. I don't know. But this is the first, this is the first time I've done the whole quilt with open seams, and I'm doing it on the suggestion of Krista, uh, who is the designer of this pattern. So I thought I'd just follow uh, follow her guidance and tips and see how I feel about the open seams just to try something try something new and I don't know maybe it's something I got to get used to but I sure like being able to nest my seams together to get those nice points I don't think I'm getting as good of points uh, doing it like this but who knows so I'd love to hear if uh, if you guys, if any of you swear by doing the open seams or swear by doing the seams that are pressed the opposite way. We talked about this a little yesterday. I guess with the 
open seams, I don't have to think as much. Like, I don't have to think about, oh, what row was pressed the one way, and then the other row has to be pressed the other way. I don't have to think about that with open seams. But I don't know. I think time-wise, it's probably a little faster pressing those seams to either side and nesting them. I don't know. I'm, I'm giving it a try because I like experimenting and trying new things uh, with, with all this crafting stuffs. But I don't know. I'm questioning the open seams of it all. Oh, look, we got a, a leader hanging out here from our last row. And okay, we are ready. This is our last last row in in this. Oh, you like having open seams, Robin? You like ironing the seams open? Let me know what you like about that. I actually, I mean, like, that took so long to press all the seams open, I, I thought. The machine Joe is doing great with the new belt. I got a new, uh, a new motor or a belt that, you know, makes the, the motor makes the belt turn, which makes the whole thing, whole machine, sewing machine do its thing. And uh, it's working nice and smooth. So I'm pretty happy. Oh, Irene, you press to the side, but you always forget which way you're going. That's, see, that's the problem with, with um, having to press to the side. So that, that is a variable that is much nicer with the open seam for sure. I don't have to think about any of that because you're just pressing them all open. You don't have to think about which way to iron them. Oh, Patricia asked, what did the gentleman say about the belt, my sewing machine belt with the cracks in it? Uh, he looked at it, and I mentioned that I just brought it in, and uh, he uh, didn't really say much, but it was clear that he knew that it was on them, <laughs> like it was their mistake. So it ended up being comped, which is great, which, you know, it should have been. Um, because they put in they put an older belt that they just happened to have, and it had cracks in We've, when we cleaned the machine uh, like a month after. We, no we noticed that there was cracks in it. So, yeah, I think he, he knew what went wrong. and But then they had to order new belts, and that took a week or so so that's why that's why we tried needle punch last week which was really fun i'm glad we got a chance to do that oh you like ironing oh so you always forget you always forget which way to press and you like ironing so you're fine with uh the open seams okay that's super duper valid robin i i hear you on that for sure now that I've seen and sewn each fabric, and you must choose which is your favorite in your quilt, which would I pick? Okay, what is my favorite fabric in the quilt? Oh man, I kind of think it moves around on me. Cause like when I was sewing it, I really liked a few of them. I don't know, it's hard because I look at one and I really, really love it, but then I look at another and I'm like, oh man, that one's really sweet. Let's, we'll take a look quick. Uh, when we're finished here. This is the last row. And then I'll, we'll get up real tall here and take a look at it again. Okay, let's get up. Yeah, Patricia, he replaced it for free, which is good because he should have. It was on, <laughs> you know, it was their mistake, really. So, yep, they replaced it for free, which was kind of weird, too, because they didn't really say that. I don't know. It was a little, it was a little awkward, but yes, it, it ended up being, being free. <laughs> so that was nice. All right, I'm going to just tilt you guys up for a second here. 
Let's snip off the little ender and let's take a peek. So this is the lower, oh, I forget. Okay, 7B. So this is the lower half of the quilt. It starts at row seven and it is B. So it is the lower right part of the quilt. So here it is. I like, I actually kind of really like this part because it has a lot of these, this purple in. I like when we get some of these random purple zigzags going. But I don't know, man. I, I like so many of these fabrics. Like, you know, I love the little strawberry. And, um, man, this weird, like, bleached Hawaiian shirt with these dots is just so weird and crazy. I really like that still. All these sort of painted-looking ones I really like a lot. And I don't know, this guy's still, still standing out for me, too. These little kind of roses in the circles. Oh, man, but the painty ones. I don't know. Um, but I'm definitely, I definitely feel... Like I'm going more towards the painted ones, kind of like these versus the more structured ones. Like I do like the, you know, the pearl bracelet is nice, but all these kind of structured ones, I don't know. I'm just not feeling quite as much as I am the painted ones, but I think I'm just on a kick of the painted stuff. I think um, like this, this is just cool, I think. Um, I think down the road, I might like a different one. You know, I, I actually really like these kind of diamond looking ones too. And these are these ones I wasn't sure about at the beginning. Like I was kind of meh about them, but the more I sewed with them, the more I liked them. So that was kind of weird. Yep, I, I love them all. I actually, honestly, I just kind of like the purple and the red together too. <laughs> so anyway, but we got like a decent size quilt here. This would be a, a le totally legitimate um baby quilt. This would actually be kind of a large baby quilt right here. Uh, this is actually a quarter of the quilt. I'm making a twin size. So I'm going to just fold this guy up for the time being. I just have to make sure that I leave my, my 7B tag here because then I know what the top is and I know that it's the B, it's the second se um, section. So we just need to let this guy hang out a little bit while we Get this guy out again. So, looks like more of the same, right? So this is, ooh, it's all tangled, it seems like. All right, this is, oh, I have, I have all the little labels on. So we don't need those anymore. I just need, I just need the top one. So this is 7A, the A section. So I think before we get going too much, let's just take these off so they're not in my way. As long as that seven stays on, ooh, the nine's gone already. If, if that seven can stay on, then we're fine. Oh, thanks, Pamela. Oh, the diamond one reminds you, Gretchen, of Mardi Gras. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, see, so remember this one? This one says, needs one more. That's when, uh, two days ago, when we made that extra, extra um, purple piece that I had forgotten. Okay, so these are all sewn together in that webbing style. Again, where all of them are, we did the rows by columns and then left all of the uh, little joins in there from chain piecing, which is cool because then this whole thing can be laid out. I don't have to remember where any of the rows go. They're all just in the right order already. And we can just, we, I don't even have to snip those. I can just fold over and start, uh, start our little process again. We'll, We'll uh, open these seams up and clip them, and uh, we're just basically doing the same thing. This is just the first quadrant. So we have the whole top done, um, rows one through six from beginning to end, we have those done. And then what we just did, what we just finished was the lower uh, right-hand corner. Now this is the lower left-hand corner. So once that's all sewn, the rows, we'll sew those two bottom pieces together, and then we'll sew the bottom to the top. <laughs> so that's, that's the plan. Oh, Patricia, I have to stay organized, otherwise I'll have to use my brain. <laughs> and that's when things go wrong, is when I start having to, to think things through. I want the least amount of thinking as I can. All right, I'm just trying to get you guys situated again here. All right, there we are. Let's clip this other section. But yeah, we'll get a, a row or two done here tonight. Then, uh, yeah, then on Monday, we will hopefully finish it up. 
Well, we'll have a couple rows to do yet, I think, and then we'll have to sew the quadrant together and then sew the other, the top to the bottom. So I'm thinking we can have all that done by Tuesday at the latest. Well, hopefully at the latest, who knows? <laughs> I'm estimating here. Uh, and then that means on Wednesday, we might have just a pressing session, a, a press session, <laughs> uh, where, because I haven't pressed any of these seams yet, and we need to press the top of our quilt just really good before we do much more with it. So by Tuesday, I'm hoping we'll have the quilt top finished, and Wednesday, we will press the whole thing and then uh, fold it up nice and, and let it be for a little while. Which means that Thursday, we can get started on the back. And how I plan on doing that is first making the, the fabric, the fake fabric, not fake fabric, but the fabric from all our tiny little bits will go through that process. Uh, so that'll probably be Thursday, Thursday and Friday. But yeah, I want to use up all the scraps in this quilt. And so we'll sew, we'll sew those together. We'll make the fake, well, fake, I keep saying fake. We'll make that fabric out of all our little tiny bits. And then we will kind of improv piece all the remaining little triangles and snippets that we have from the fabric that's a little bit bigger. And then from those pieces, once we have all those pieces, then we will figure out how to fill it in with a bunch of this red fabric for the back of the quilt. So I want to get all the scraps on the back in some fashion. I think we might even have enough for a chevron, or a half of a chevron at least. So that'd be kind of fun to have one of the little chevrons on the back too. In theory, I'd like the back to be as fun as the front because then it could go in either direction. You know, it'd be like a, a little reversible quilt. So that's, we'll start thinking about that coming up. So I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, Gretchen, it's going to be fun when we make all, all the fabric. And when I mean the little bits, I mean, uh, I mean this, this jar of scraps, like teeny, teeny, itty bitty snippets. We're going to take all these snippets and uh, turn this into fabric. And it's a really fun process. Um, if you want to do that with us, you will need, uh, we're going to use the Sulky Sticky Fabricelvi. So we've used that before. Oh, actually, it's actually called Stick and Stitch. So we're going to use the Sulky Stick and Stitch. And uh, I think I still have some of that in my shop. I probably have a link here as well. You're going to need some of that. And I know a lot of you might have, have some of that already if you got some of my kits and stuff. Uh, and then the uh, you'll also need like a little backing fabric. So I have a bunch of muslin hanging out and about. And I'm going to just use that. So you'll need, besides your all your scraps, I mean, you'll need your sewing machine and some thread still. But besides that, you'll need a backing fabric. And like I said, I'm just using muslin. I have like muslin scraps, like 12 inch scraps. I'm just going to use my 12 inch squares of muslin and then make, make like 12 inch squares um, of this fabric. And then, then the sulky stick and stitch, which is a wash away embroidery stabilizer. And uh, yes, Gretchen, you can get it at Joann's. Uh, I have seen it, it's in that, it's actually by the embroideries right now. And uh, I think you can also still find it in like the interfacing, that whole aisle of crazy interfacing. But what you're looking for is something that it goes on sticky, so like a sticker. So it sticks on, so it'll probably say stick on or a sticker or, you know, some sort of that it'll say on the package. And uh, then it washes away. So it washes away in water. Those are the two elements that you need. So if you don't use the sulky uh, stick and stitch, it used to be called sticky Fabrisolvi. So they, it might still be called Fabrisolvi where you have it. But if you don't get that brand, then what you're looking for is it goes on sticky, like a sticker, and it comes off with water. 
those are the two elements that matter, how it goes on, how it comes off. And these pieces are going to be rather thick and hefty. So if you're wanting like a light drapey um, deal with this fabric, that's, that's not what we're making. This is going to be like layers and layers of fabric on top of each other. It's going to be pretty hefty, but it, it's fun. And it's going to be like all raw edgy and, and everything, but they're like little pieces of artwork and I love them so much. And you know what? We could maybe cut them into, we could maybe make chevrons out of them, actually. That would be kind of fun. Now that I'm brainstorming. We could make like big, big chevrons that mimic these smaller chevrons. Like I said, I have that about 12 inch muslin pieces that I will be um, using as my base fabric. And you know, let's say I trim them down to 10 inches when I'm done, then I can make some of these uh, chevrons by uh, the same process, but with, with 10 inch pieces and have that really crazy fabric that we make on, you know, for the pattern stuff and then the red for the back, that could be super fun. Might try and figure that out for the back of this quilt. And I'll make as many, as many pieces of this new fabric as, um, as I have scraps basically. And then I, like I said, I have normal size scraps too from this, like uh, little cuttings from, or you know, other little triangles and stuff. So we'll, we'll sew all those together in some sort of um, improv sort of style. So we're gonna get all crazy and improv -y on the back of this quilt, which I'm pretty excited about. I still love the idea of using up every single little piece of fabric in one quilt, like you won't see some of this fabric in any other of my quilt because it's all used up, no scraps. A scrapless quilt. <laughs> Almost, it won't be quite scrapless, like I'll have little, little bits here and there, but for the most part, I shouldn't have any scraps left over that I gotta figure out where to store them and, and all that. All right, this is the last little bit here. Just getting my stiletto out here again. All right, and a little ender in here. My stack of wonder clips piled up again. Okay, that is the uh, first row there of this quadrant, so here we go. So now we're gonna take this and just flip the right sides together again and just continue the same thing. And I think we have time to do a whole nother row here, so I'm excited about that. So same deal, we're gonna just go along the edge here, uh, put the seams together, same as what we've been doing. Did you guys see my little moment of zen over on uh, in my Instagram stories today? I uh, this afternoon for like five minutes. I just needed to sew something for five minutes, and I was just at my parents' house, and my mom had a huge bag of scraps. Oh, you saw it, Gretchen? A huge bag of scraps, like huge, and uh, I just started taking like tiny pieces out of there and doing the improv sewing and it's that sort of improv sewing that I'm that I'm talking about for the for the back of this quilt I should see if it's in with arms length so I can show you guys but yeah that it felt so good just to sew for those those five minutes and that's all I needed I just needed a little a little moment of zen there let's see I'm not quite sure I can reach it let me go look All right, got it. So this is, my mom has like these bags of scraps from different projects. These are really small scraps. This is what I took mine out of, but I have two more bags like this that she she sent me. 
um, <laughs> sent home with me. So I just started sewing the little pieces together, just like improv sewing. And um, I'll show you guys how to do this when we uh, um, start sewing together all the all my remaining pieces from from this quilt. But the same sort of deal, like I like all these tiny tiny pieces that are you know anyone else would probably be garbage. I mean, you know, I'm even saying the ones that are saving the ones that are too small that are like unsewable, so I can make the the fabric like how we're gonna do with all the scraps from here as well. But I don't know. It just makes me happy, happy looking at it, <laughs> and uh, it's just like gonna be one of those projects that I keep adding on and adding on and adding on, and it's gonna just be like this wackadoo crazy thing when I'm done. But that was my my five minutes. It was probably more like ten minutes, but. I'm going to pretend it was five minutes. My five minutes of zen today. <laughs> That's a nice thing for sure about being able to keep projects out or projects at least organized. Because if, if the sewing machine wasn't out and ready to go, there's no way I would have done that. And the fabric out and ready to go. The fabric was out just because I haven't put those... I haven't done anything with those bags of fabric since we got back. They've just been laying on the floor <laughs> waiting for me to decide what to do with it. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to sew. I'm going to sew with them. A few little gems of fabric in there. I was actually thinking it might be fun to, you know, this is way wishful thinking at this point, but like once it's done as a quilt, <laughs> you know, once this tiny thing is the size of a quilt, which who knows if that'll ever happen, but I was thinking it would be fun to try over dyeing it. So have you guys heard of that before? Um, over dyeing is when you dye something that's already printed or already, um, already colored. So I was thinking like we'd, I do this and, um, you know, dye it like an indigo or maybe even bleach it so it's like a light, you know, it's all like, like a white, you know, you know, like that bleach kind of that washy, wash away bleached look. But you know, you never know how it's going to react with the different fabrics. So you'd still probably be able to see a little bit of the pattern in a little bit, but it would all be kind of when your eye looks at it, it wouldn't look like a ton of fabric with a ton of different colors. It would just be like a nice, washed out look or a nice, a nice, um, ooh, or tea diet. Yeah. Something like that. But like where, where I just kind of meld all the colors together with, with a dye or a bleach or, or something, which I have never done before. And I think that's why I'm thinking about that is, um, I don't know, lately, lately with, uh, some friends we've been talking about dyeing fabric, like batiks and all that. And I've, I've never, I've never tie dyed anything. I've never, done me dying and I just love the idea of getting a big bucket filling it with some dye some color whatever it is and um, you know dip dyeing a whole thing and I think with all the tiny little pieces all the like t tiny little bit of mini textures and all the different little sewn bits together I think it would be cool it would make the quilt look super subtle with all one color and then uh, when you actually look at it, you'll be like, oh my God, it's got so many pieces and so many weird angles and so many different fabrics. So that's kind of, that's what's in my brain. But again, that was on the premise of that I ever get <laughs> a quilt size amount of um, those little pieces sewn together. But I kind of like that idea. You love tie-dyeing, Gretchen? Yeah, I don't think I've ever done that. Not even at like a summer camp or, or anything. Which seems super odd. It seems seems surprising that I've made it this long without tie-dyeing anything. <laughs> Does not seem right. <laughs> Alright, here's our last, uh, last seam. You want to dye also? Yeah, so one of these days, you know, years from now, <laughs> while I'm still doing, still doing these Facebook lives every single night, uh, I will have that in a quilt. <laughs> it will be big enough to be a quilt. And at that point, we'll have to do some, some test dyeing. That'd be kind of fun. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe all of a sudden I'll have 
oodles of free time and or I'll just spend all my time quilting. Quilting scraps together. I think it was a little obsessive thing. Like I had to, I, like I have to sew something right, right now. I have to make something. And that made it, that made it go away for a little bit so I could get back to the other work. All right, I need my stiletto. All right, so I think we will get through sewing this row, which is about where we got uh, last night. And then we will pick up the rest of this on Monday. We got the two more rows and then sewing the quadrants together. It's coming together. Oh man, definitely, um, definitely getting bulky here again. If you teach it, I'll do it with you. Oh, that's awesome, Susan. Yep. So <laughs> you guys sure uh, trust me on things that I've never done before. <laughs> so I don't know. We'll see. Those, uh, the dying, that is a whole new world to me. But, you know, I like, I like doing my research a little bit beforehand, so I feel like I know enough, and then, <laughs> then you guys are always there to help me out when things go crazy. So, I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, Tracy, yes, I love these clips so much. Um, I do have a link for them, I believe, in, in my post here. These are the mini wonder clips, so I'll just show you the difference. So, a normal, a normal wonder clip is this size, and these are the minis. They're by Clover. Uh, these are the mini ones. They're just, uh, they're about half the width and then they come to more of a little taper there. But I like them. You can get really get, you know, ice, you can really pinpoint a little bit more where you're um, wanting to clip. But yeah, I don't stab myself with these. So that's nice versus pins. And they're super duper strong too. And I'm not like moving fabric around all weird either. Like, you know, if I pin, it kind of nudges the fabric. I don't have to worry about that with the clips. It's definitely one of my new favorite tools. And pins definitely work just fine, so no one needs to go run out and get these. But it is making my life a little bit, a little bit easier. Susan, yeah, we made it through the splendid sampler together. Exactly. <laughs> if we can make it through that, then we can, we can make it through any of this new stuff, right? <laughs> That's for sure. That was a whole pile of new stuff all over the place. But that was fun. I learned so much from working on that project with you guys. Which is not done, by the way, yet. Um... I have to finish quilting the border and then put a binding on it yet. I think the binding is made, but man, I just need to do some straight line stitching in that border. Once we finish the hedgehog uh, for the Finish It Fridays, uh, once we finish the hedgehog, I think that Splendid Sampler's gotta be up next because I cannot have that undone for much longer. Yeah, this isn't done either yet, funny. Oh, it's just sitting in a bin. So sad. I can't believe it's... I just don't have it done. But yeah, so... <laughs> Finish It Friday is... Oh, Libby, yours is done! That's amazing. Uh, Finish It Friday will be coming up in April here soon. Um, first week of April. So first... First uh, Friday of the month is Finish It Friday, where we drop whatever project we're working on and pick up something that we don't have done yet and work on that for the evening instead. It's actually... I, I'm actually pretty amazed at how much just that one hour a month <laughs> helps move a project along a little bit. Something that would just be sitting for ages, waiting to be worked on. Like the Splendid Sampler. <laughs> I think that's a good candidate for Finish It Fridays. Thing is, it's not even going to take that long. All right, 
So, I think that is it for the night. Um, oh, you didn't have yours machine quilted. I just stitched in the ditch. I did no fancy quilting at all on it, Joe. I think after this project, I'm going to do all the fancy quilting on this project here. I think I'm going to leave the, the red... Um, the red plain, and then these, I'll put all the fancy quilting in, then it'll at least be a little hidden, all my my uh, crazy quilting as I learn. But I think after I finish this quilt and learn a little bit more about the free motion quilting, then I think I'll be able to tackle a big project. But my splendid sampler, nope, that is just stitching in the ditch, following the lines, the end. That's all that one's gonna be. So all right guys, I'm gonna flip you around. We will call it an evening and let's just take a look at this today. All right, hello! There's my giant wall of boxes again. All right, just shaking a little bit. All right, so here we are. Now this is that first quadrant. So we, uh, earlier this evening, right here, we finished the lower right-hand quadrant. This is the lower left-hand quadrant. So we sewed these first three rows together. So we got these three. Oh, it's pretty. Uh, and then we still have these last two dangling down here. So on Monday, we will finish these last two rows. Easy peasy. We did that today on the other half. And then we will sew quadrant A to quadrant B. And that will be our, um, that will finish our bottom. Row 7 through 11 will be done at that point. And then we just have one more seam. We got to sew the whole entire top to the whole entire bottom. And then the top is done, except for we have to press the whole thing. So we haven't pressed any of our seams, and that's going to take at least a whole day here. I'm, I'm going to get my, uh, my Amish ironing board out. We'll give that a go. I'll probably have to move the table around a little bit, but we're going to have a whole pressing session, and that'll be kind of fun. So that'll be next week. We'll get to that yet. Woo! That means next week we're going to have this quilt top done. Wow, that's exciting. So again, if you're just joining me, we're doing the Charming Chevrons Quilt by Krista Watson of Krista Quilts. Uh, so pretty. And I will get this up on YouTube if you want to watch this replay. And they all the replays from this entire project are on YouTube, along with all the other projects that we've been working on. They're all grouped by project, so it should be pretty easy for you guys to find and get to the beginning if you want to do that, start fresh and do the whole thing with us. We'll be here for a while yet working on this quilt because I'm using it as a tool to learn how to free motion quilt. So if you're interested in that and want to learn with me, uh, once we make a back of this quilt and sandwich together, we will be quilting. So awesome, guys. Thanks again for joining me tonight. Uh, if you're not part of the Penguin and Fish Crafters group yet, I hope you uh, join that. Just do a search on Facebook. And I will see you on Monday. Have a fabulous weekend, guys. Good night.